Hello everyone and welcome to a video where I will be playing uh, a, uh, a chess game against the Maya Chess uh, and uh, Maya is a human-like neural network chess engine uh, that plays uh, like an engine. Uh, she probably can be strong as a regular engine like Leela Chess Zero, uh, but she uh, tries to make uh, moves that are more human-like. So uh, in order to give you a better idea of what's, uh, what's all this about, uh, I will just uh, show you uh, from their website uh, a few sentences so you, you get a better idea. So Maya Chess is a human-like neural network chess engine, uh, we already said that, and here it is uh, capturing human style in chess. So here you can see a, a graph with a move matching accuracy uh, between Stockfish, Leela Chess 0 and the Maya Chess. Stockfish you can see a little bit below 40% 40, 40 uh, matching human moves, Leela is, uh, well, somewhere around 44 I would say, and Maya is well over 50% in matching human moves. So they say... Maya's goal is to play the human move, not necessarily the best move. As a result, Maya has a more human-like style than previous engines. Matching moves played by human players in online games uh, over 50% of the time. And uh, uh, they say that Maya is an Alpha Zero Leela-like deep learning framework that learns from online human games instead of self-play. So when Leela Chess Zero was uh, learning how to play chess, uh, she played, uh, I don't know how many millions of games uh, against herself and then... Uh, became very strong, uh, whereas uh, Maya learns uh, from online human games uh, instead of self-play. Uh, Maya is trained on millions of games and tries to predict the human move uh, played in each position scene. We trained nine versions of Maya, uh, one for each ELO milestone between 1100 and 1900. Maya 1100 was only trained on games between 1100 rated players uh, and so on. Each version learned from 12 million human games and learns how chess is typically played at, the, at its specific level. So there you have it. Uh, we measure move matching accuracy, how often Maya predicts a move uh, is the same as the human move played in the real online games. Because we train nine different versions of Maya, uh, each at a targeted skill level, we can begin to algorithmically capture what kinds of mistakes players at specific skill level make and when people stop making them. So here we have an example. Uh, the Mayas predict that people stop playing the tempting uh, but wrong move B6 at around 1500. So here uh, is an interesting position. And uh, if white pushes the pawn to B6, black will capture uh, with the queen. Uh, black will capture the C5 pawn with the queen. And uh, his, uh, well, white's position will just uh, uh, be messed up. White's gonna lose all of its advantage. So it uh, could be very useful if you were training for a very specific opponent and, uh, well, you had a uh, Maya, for example, to prepare you for that specific opponent. Uh, for example, Maya could go all, all, over all of uh, his or hers games and then tell you which uh, mistakes he, uh, he or her most usually makes. And uh, I'm not going to read everything from the website as there are quite a lot of uh, interesting things here, so you can go over it yourself. Uh, but basically you can also play against Maya, uh, you can play against Maya yourself on leeches, you can play against Maya 1100, Maya 1500 and Maya 1900. Uh, I wanted to make a video where I will uh, play a game against all of them, uh, but after finishing a game against Maya 1100, uh, uh, I could no longer get a game, uh, they had uh, some sort of a malfunction here, they, I, I even asked them on Twitter, uh, they said that uh, it was, um, uh, well, it was a, a problem uh, because... Uh, Sorry, let me just uh, let me just uh, bring that up. Uh, they said sorry about that. Uh, even though I haven't adjusted any volume in this video and not said sorry about that, they said sorry about that. So it, it seems like we can't make a video without sorry about that. But all the it, all the interest has them down at the moment. We will ping you when they're back up. They did not ping me uh, as of yet. So I decided to make uh, a video based on one game alone. And then if you guys are interested, we can check out the other Mayas as well. So in short, uh, Maya is an ongoing research project using chess as a case study for how to design better human AI interactions. Uh, we hope Maya becomes a useful learning tool and is fun to play against. Our research goals include personalizing Maya to individual players, characterizing the kinds of mistakes they are made uh, at each rating level, uh, running Maya on your own games uh, and spotting repeated predictable mistakes and more. This is work in progress and we, uh, we'd love to hear what you think. Please let us know uh, if you have any feedback uh, or questions by email or Twitter. And here uh, we have, uh, well, some other very interesting information and this is the theme behind the project so you can check that out as well. There you go. Uh, let me just uh, frame that nicely. Uh, there we go, theme. All right. So that's it with the introduction uh, and then uh, after reading all of that and figuring out what Maya actually was, 
uh, I uh, decided to play a game. So this is a game against the Maya 1100, and let me tell you, she's much stronger than 1100. I don't know what they were <laughs> what they were doing, but uh, that that's not 1100 play. Uh, so I have the black pieces in this game, and uh, it's a three-minute blitz game. So I didn't want to play a longer game, and I just wanted to get at least one game in. Uh, so let's just check it out. Maya has the white pieces and opens with d4. And uh, to see uh, what kind of an engine it is, uh, I played e5. I went for the, the England gambit. Uh, Maya accepted the gambit, and I played f6. So I want to give up another pawn to get some rapid development. And uh, grabbing this pawn is not the, the best way to play this position. Uh, there are much better moves, uh, e4 or knight f3. And stronger players will often uh, play this. But uh, for bullet and blitz games, I enjoy playing this very much as... Pretty much no one knows the theory uh, behind it, so everyone will will make a mistake. Uh, but unless you get to a higher rating, and then you know no one will fall for it. So e captures uh, Maya captures it. I recapture knight captures on f6 and knight f3. And here bishop to c5. And here uh, I'm uh, white. Of course, is better. White grabbed the pawn, and uh, I mean. Uh, black is up a little bit in development, but it's not enough to uh, for the gambited pawn. And here is a very interesting position because I can't tell you how many bullet games I won. Uh, for example, if white goes bishop g5, I sometimes go knight e4. I mean, not sometimes, I always go uh, knight e4 in this position. And white thinks you blunder the queen, but after uh, the queen is captured, just bishop captures and f2 is checkmate. And, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're going to be very happy uh, by winning a game like this. However, Maya doesn't go for something like that. Knight to c3 is played. And here there is one game in the database where d5 was played. I played knight to c6. And it is already as of move 5 that we have a completely new game. So here uh, Maya continues with e4 and I castle to safety. Uh, and here bishop to c4 check. Uh, I go king to h8, and now Maya also castles the safety. And here I play d6. And I'm down a pawn, but uh, my position isn't uh, isn't all that bad. So bishop to g5, developing uh, with a pin, and here I go bishop to g4, uh, the same. With h3, challenging my bishop, and bishop to h5. And here uh, Maya bravely uh, and boldly goes g4, so challenging my bishop, and I just retreated with bishop to g6. Here you could play some other moves, uh, like you could consider, uh, well, you, you can't consider sacrificing because the, the knight is pinned, but there are ideas like queen uh, to d7 or queen to c8 to allow the capture of this bishop, and then maybe you can go down to h3 with the bishop here slicing over. Could be very dangerous, but uh, in the mindset of playing against an engine, I just retreated the bishop, and now comes knight to d5. Uh, I played queen to e8. Uh, here. Uh, I, I want to unpin, uh, but I also uh, <laughs> decided to, uh, to uh, allow the capture of the c7 pawn, which is weird, but uh, uh, again, I'm in the mindset of playing against an 1100 uh, opponent, and I don't really uh, mind playing any move uh, for that matter. But capturing an e4 is the way to go here, because there will be a lot of pressure on the f3 knight. So here I played queen to e8, it's a pretty bad move, and of course knight captures on c7 follow. So the queen is under attack, rook is under attack, uh, I move back, queen to d7, and now knight captures. And here I recapture the knight. Uh, again, uh, sacrificing on g4 was a little bit better than recapturing, there's always time for this, this is uh, definitely the way to go. Uh, but I played the, the normal recapture. And here we have bishop captures. We have g captures and now knight to h4. And here white is completely winning. So uh, I'm completely trashed in 16 moves. So that's uh, very nicely played by, by an 1100 opponent. Uh, we have bishop captures on e4. I grab that pawn. Uh, and now comes rook to e1. And here uh, I still... Uh, I'm still trying. Uh, I do have a very nice bishop pair. I always enjoy a very nice bishop pair. And if I can somehow mobilize my pieces, maybe I can still try something here. So I played rook to e8 here, uh, defending this bishop, and now comes knight to f5. And it's just, again, a very, very tough position for me to play. A terrible one at that. Uh, so I decided to eliminate the knight. Bishop captures, g captures. Uh, and now comes queen to g7 with check. Uh, Maya just moved the king, king to f1, and here I played knight to e5, avoiding a trade. Uh, I want to try and get this rook into the game, but it's very hard. However, uh, Maya makes it easy for me, and she allows me one move that actually allows me to win the game. Here, Maya played bishop to b5 as I'm attacking the bishop, uh, but... Um, 
it's uh, it's not the way to go here the the best reply for white is to either move the bishop or to play queen h5 uh, offer a bishop but attack the uh, sorry uh, attack the rook here so this is one of the moves that are possible however here Maya played bishop to b5 gave me an opportunity and I immediately went for it and now there's one move that wins the game for black and uh, well feel free to pause the video and find that move uh, wh while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the, the only move that wins after playing a terrible game with black. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to g8. This is what I played and uh, I was very happy to get this uh, little glimpse of hope. Uh, Maya started running away with the king and here I just played queen to g2, threatened the df2 pawn. And here comes uh, the, the most interesting part of the game, at least for me. Here Maya played rook to g1, attacked my queen. Uh, and uh, well, what follows was just uh, queen captures an f2 checkmate. Now you might wonder, wow, I mean, okay, it's a it's an engine, but why would an engine allow mate in one? Uh, I think what happened here is that if you do something like king to d2, I can still just capture, and after king to c1, uh, now uh, a, a lot of things win. For example, if, if knight f3 going after the rook, rook f1, just bishop to e3 with check, and here just let's say knight d2 check completely wins the game. Uh, but I think what Maya did here with rook to g1 uh, probably uh, hoped that I would miss queen captures on f2. Uh, and if I go back, for example, queen e4 check, king to f1, and white is defending. All of a sudden, I, I, I don't have an attack anymore. So this is, uh, this is what I think that happened here. And it was a very sneaky idea, but luckily I was able to do it. Uh, so after this rook to g1 move, I just played queen captures on f2 with checkmate. Uh, I will put a link to the game. Uh, it was played on Leecher, so you can check it out and go through all the moves if you want to. Uh, but what's uh, what's very interesting about this game is that uh, it's a three-minute game. Uh, I spent one minute on the game. I think one minute and one second, uh, whereas Maya uh, spent only two seconds uh, on this entire game. So out of the three minutes, uh, she was left with two minutes and 58 seconds on the clock. So uh, very, very uh, commendable. Uh, but yeah, I only managed to get a game in against Maya 1100. Uh, when I get a game against Maya 1900, I will uh, try to play uh, a bit more solidly and don't go for any s sneaky openings. But for this one, uh, I was very, very amazed that I actually won this game because if not for this bishop to b5 move in this position, which uh, is completely dominating uh, uh, for white, uh, the bishop is needed here guarding the g8 square. You cannot allow rook g8. But after this, I mean, I, I, I was uh, probably as surprised as you guys are now that I actually won this game. So pretty, pretty crazy stuff. So I will put uh, links to all of the Maya so you can challenge them in the description below. Also, I'll, I'll put a link to the uh, Maya chess website so you can read more about uh, about it as we didn't uh, go through all of it. So I do hope you guys enjoy that as well. And uh, yeah, uh, challenge Maya, see see how you fare against her. And uh, may, maybe you you will also face some very interesting moves like, uh, <laughs> like Rook to G1 here allowing me this mate in one, which is... Uh, I, I don't, I mean, even if you play against the weakest engine, even the weakest engine will not allow you a mate in one. The, uh, the engine will always try to survive for at least uh, two or three more moves, depending on the position. But here, allowing this, I think Maya actually uh, was hoping for a blunder for me and then, then she could survive. So very interesting stuff. Uh, and yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you guys enjoyed it and a little bit of, uh, well, uh, not history, but general knowledge about what Maya Chess is. Uh, so play against her and uh, see what happens. It's it's a it's a very interesting project. Uh, so yeah, once again, I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would I would like to thank Ben Dutet, uh, Joseph Stryber, uh, Hoodie Guy, Aras Bacho, and Din, Dean Wrigley for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the Morphe Saga checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And I'm very eager to see where, where this project goes. Uh, see you soon.